What's going on? Justin back here with another video from Modern Mixing. Today we're going to talk about resonant frequencies. Just going to give you a quick visual. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of the resonant frequency, which is basically just a buildup or a peak in a certain frequency. Um, I generally tend, tend to think of it in the lower range, but it can happen pretty much anywhere on, on the frequency spectrum from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So let's just see. These two here, let's just say this one over here is, I don't know, let's just say 150 hertz. Let's say this one over here is 280. So what we're trying to do essentially is try to pull these two back a little bit, make them a little bit more spread out and just give the sound a little bit more of a natural feel so it's not so I guess you could say boomy I don't know if that's the right word but boomy in those frequencies and this is even before you start cleaning out the mud and all that stuff this is well at least for me this is what I tackle first I try to figure out if there's any resonant frequencies usually it'll be in anything that's recorded live like vocals and guitars or drums or whatever and and usually that's because uh, of room of the room that it's recorded in especially nowadays when people are recording in you know closets and you know bedrooms and all that stuff so the room tends to have a resonant frequency where it comes out in the vocal recordings or the guitars or whatever so i'm going to show you a couple ways that we can get rid of that so here's the track it's just an acoustic guitar and a vocal I'm going to just be treating the, the acoustic guitar here for time's sake, but you can apply this to the vocals or whatever you want. So let's listen to it. I got a broken heart and no one to sing. All right, so you can hear some low end build up in there, and this frequency analyzer picked it up. So you can see it's got an average of about 110 to 120. This one's about 250, and I've viewed this before, so I know that it's peaking from like 250 to 300, and this one's about 120 to like 150. So, again, we don't want to take the analyzer and believe everything that it's telling us, so we want to use our ears. So, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab that EQ to get rid of all that low-end buildup. Mm. This doesn't really have to do with the resonance, but it's good to just get rid of that anyways. I guess it was like 70. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find that 120, 150 area that I don't like and then pull it out and then see how that sounds. Okay, so let's try to listen to a so, uh, to a bypass and an unbypass, and let's see if it makes a difference. Okay, I think it's starting to sound a little bit better. My only issue now with it is there's still some buildup in the bottom end. So the other frequency was around 250, so I would be comfortable pulling out a little bit more in that frequency as well. So let's try it out.
Okay, so again, bypass, unbypassed. Okay, so it sounds a little bit cleaner. So that's just one way you can do it, but um, just over time you learn to get things to be a little bit more musical. So another way you can do it, which should be a little bit more musical, is to use a multiband. So you might need to use two different multibands in this case, but let's try. And the reason is because you want some tight. You want some tight bandwidths here. So let's start with that. Let's bypass everything else. Okay, let's listen to bypass and unbypass. Okay, so again, there's still that little build up in that 250 300 range. So, what I'd probably do is I would probably let's get rid of that. I would probably just do that with EQ. It sounds like I can get rid of it with EQ. So let's try it. So I'll bypass it and then I'll bypass both the plugins and then I'll bring them back in. So Again, I'm just doing this really, really quickly. Like generally, you listen to it, you listen to the the take, uh, or sorry, the song fully through a bunch of times. You tweak, make little small adjustments here. You know, right now I have this pulling down at 240. I might have to move it up to 280, whatever. I don't know. I know I'm in the region, but you just have to fine tune it as you, as you go along. And then once you have the vocals kind of laid over top of it, you know, you might want to pull back a little bit. You might want to take a little bit more out. You know, you don't know. You have to see how they work together. But this is just a general idea. And quickly, just one more. This is my favorite one. It's the exact same thing as the uh, as the multiband compressor. Um, it's just more effective. It's I guess you could call this a dynamic EQ. But... Um, yeah, and you can set the attacks, the ratios, the thresholds, everything you want, and it only will attack that one area. And this thing is, it's designed, it's like an, it's an inverse of, um, uh, of like a, a peaking filter, I guess you could say. So those resonance, as they're peaking, this is going to, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like taking an oscillator and then flipping the phase on the oscillator so it cancels it out. And that's, you don't want to, totally cancel that frequency out you just want to push it back so it's a little bit more smooth and 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 um easier to listen to so that the more important frequencies in the guitar can stand out so let's listen again let's turn this off Okay, so again, we have that 250 region again. So this time, instead of using the EQ, I'm going to use this one. 
and let's play with it and we'll see what happens. So let's listen to bypass and unbypassed. So yeah, these this plugin is definitely the most musical out of all the three ways that I showed you. Um, another way you could probably do, I'm not going to show it just for time's sake, but another way you could do it is you could use an equalizer and you could automate the EQ every time that frequency pops up. Um, but anyways, I'm going way too long here. There's so many things that I want to say, but obviously I don't want to do an hour video. Um, but yeah, there's just a couple ideas for you. Try it out. See if it makes your stuff sound more listenable or, you know, it's it's not so boomy. And then, yeah, try to tackle those resonant frequencies first and then move on to the mud um, and then start doing your boosting if you need it. Like with this guitar here, I'd probably do a little bit boosting in the high end a little bit. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, and also you have to bring the vocals in and stuff like that. So, so yeah, give it a try. See how you like it. And um, hopefully that helps.